And through the Bible we know that Enoch, who was the great-grandson of Adam and the great-grandfather of Noah, lived a holy and faithful life to the Lord. He also became the father of Methuselah, the man who lived the longest in the entire Bible. Enoch, over his more than 300 years on earth, had several other descendants. Enoch is also one of only two people taken directly to heaven, completely escaping death. We will also touch on the pseudonymous Book of Enoch in today's video. So, in today's video, we will talk about the story of Enoch. Welcome to Witnessing Jesus Christ, that Lisbon gives grace. What's up, what's up, beloved? I ask for the help of all of you to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell. If you like the video, leave a like. It helps me a lot to produce more videos. Without further ado, let's go to the video. God's plan in the meaning of names. Enoch means teaching or instruction. The name Enoch is directly linked to God's plan, yes, in the birth of Jesus Christ. This is because the meanings of the names from Adam to Noah's descendants were very important. An example of this is the name Enoch, whose meaning is written in the Bible itself, Genesis chapter 5, verse 29. See, and he called his name Enoch, saying, out of the ground that the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and from the painful toil of our hands. But what is the importance of the meanings of the descendants of Enoch, and what does this have to do with Enoch? Well, let's analyze together the meanings of the names from Adam to Noah. In the original, Adam means man, Seth appointed weak and mortal years, Canaan, affliction and lamentation, Mahalalel holy God, Jared from being to Enoch, teaching and instruction, Methuselah, his death will bring Lamech, absence of hope, and Noah, relief and comfort. This gives a sentence to man who is appointed a mortal affliction, but the holy God will teach that his death will bring relief and comfort to the hopeless. Now I ask you, who is this if not Jesus Christ? The story of Enoch, one of only two people in the Bible, seems to have been taken directly to heaven without experiencing death. Most of us know the second one, Elijah, this famous prophet who received a celestial chariot that took him to heaven in a whirlwind after the end of his ministry, leaving Elisha to continue the mission. Most of us don't know much about Enoch, the other person who was taken directly to heaven. He appears in Genesis, and as soon as he comes on the scene, he enters heaven. But the Bible does not inform how Enoch was caught up. So let's discuss what the Bible says about Enoch, the extra biblical information we have about Enoch, and whether or not it is important to us. Now comes a question, why did the other great heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 have to go through death? And why did this enigmatic figure escape it. Let's analyze. First, as argued here, Enoch being caught up is our example of what it will be like during the rapture. During this event, God will take believers to heaven at the end of times. Christians differ in opinions about exactly when the rapture will occur. During the end times timeline, before the seven-year tribulation, at the halfway point of the seven-year judgment, or after the seven-year tribulation, etc. But at some point during the end times, God will snatch believers away, just as he did with Enoch. Second, Noah, who lived a few hundred years before the flood, we see the inhabitants of the earth falling into total moral depravity during that time period. Considering that people at that time lived for hundreds of years, some Christians speculated, due to a vapor canopy surrounding the earth, blocking harmful gamma rays and producing a temperate climate. So much so that in this thinking, when the flood came, it came as the first rain on the earth. To reinforce this basis, it is a fact that no one believed Noah's word as he warned that the flood would come, but that's a topic for another video. Third, we see a faithful man living among a tongue-in-cheek generation, like Elijah during the time of King Ahab. At a certain time, Elijah is the only prophet of God left, outnumbered by 450 prophets of the enemy. 
What extra biblical information do we have about ours? As we know practically nothing about Enoch's story, let's step into thin ice now. I want to say that what I'm going to say now is not in the Bible because it is as follows, brothers. Depending on which Christian tradition you came from, you may consider the Book of Enoch canonical. But in this video, we will operate on what the canonical Bible is only composed of 66 books, which are the Old and New Testaments as we normally know, placing the Book of Enoch as pseudonymous. In other words, an author who self-identified himself in the US to see the Book of Enoch, in this case a man using a pseudonym. Many believe that the Bible actually quotes the book of Enoch in Jude chapter 1 verses 14 and 15 and 2 Peter chapter 4 verse 6. Both passages seem to draw portions from the tradition of the book of Enoch. In both cases, the book of Enoch is an apocalyptic text that discusses the end of the world, angels, the Nephilim, prophecies and punishments for the wicked post-flood. It is a somewhat parallel text to what we see happening in the apocalypse. As Christians, we live in an increasingly morally depraved world which will come to an end. We can see parallels in the story of Enoch with the story of the apocalypse. Still living in a wicked world, we are called to be righteous and walk in faith with God. Although many of us, if not all of us, since we don't know when Jesus will return, experience the pains of death. Christians in the end times will experience a rapture. It is important to note that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3-18, as many Christians who have already died, as many who are still alive, will participate in this event together. So in any case, we will experience the rapture. During this time, we will meet Jesus in the clouds. See, right after that, we, the ones alive on the earth, will be caught up like them in the clouds to meet our Lord in the air. And so we will be with Christ forever. The heresies of John Dee and Edward Kelly, Enochian, the mysterious language of angels. Enochian is a mysterious language that 16th century occultists John Dee and Edward Kelly recorded in their private journals. They claimed that this celestial discourse allowed magicians and occultists to communicate with angelic realms. They claimed to have received and given from angels, providing the basis for a language with which to communicate with the other side. This angelic language contained its own alphabet, grammar. In summary, they wrote a diary, the new language was called Enochian, and comes from John's claim that the biblical patriarch Enoch was the last human to know the language. It is documented that they used certain objects, such as a black obsidian mirror and a crystal ball, to experience these visions. They acted as orators, directing prayers to God and the archangels for 15 minutes to an hour. Then, a piece of evidence was placed on the table and the angels were called to manifest themselves. The two would observe the stones and record everything they saw and heard. They were informed by the angels that magic would give superhuman powers, the practitioner would change the political structure of Europe and announce the arrival of the apocalypse. D believed that what he was doing would be beneficial for posterity and documented the information in a series of manuscripts and booklets. He never described the language used during the sessions as Enochian, but preferred to call it angelical celestial speech. The first language of God and Christ, and particularly Adamic because he claimed that it was used by Adam in the Garden of Eden to name all creatures of God. Who was Enoch? And I don't have a very well-known biblical character, especially because he did not experience death. That's right, the Bible says that Enoch did not die. He is mentioned in the Old and New Testaments, and in this video you will understand everything the Bible says about who Enoch was. And before we talk about the story of Enoch, it is important to highlight here that the Bible mentions two people with the same name. The first is Enoch, who was Cain's eldest son. Indeed, the biblical text says that this not named the city built by his father. The second person who received the name Enoch in the Bible was the son of Jared. 
from the lineage of Seth. So, while the first Enoch belonged to Cain's wicked lineage, the second Enoch belonged to Seth's righteous lineage, which preserved the knowledge of God. Obviously, it was Enoch from Seth's lineage who became known for being caught up to heaven. Despite highlighting his lineage, the Bible also reveals that Enoch was the father of Methuselah. This means that Enoch was the father of the man who lived the longest in human history, 969 years. However, Methuselah was not Enoch's only son. The Bible says that Enoch had sons and daughters, but their names are not recorded in the biblical text. The Bible also states that Enoch had a deep relationship with God. This is clear in the biblical statement that Enoch walked with God. Interestingly, of all the characters in the Bible, this expression, walked with God, is applied only to Enoch and Noah. It is worth mentioning here that Noah was Enoch's great-grandson. The biblical text states that Enoch lived 365 years in great communion with God and was no more found. Subsequently, the same text explains Enoch's disappearance, saying that God took him to himself. Some scholars suggest that perhaps the 365 years attributed to Enoch are a symbolic number corresponding to the days of a solar year, possibly indicating a complete and privileged life. The difficulty of this suggestion is that the text of Genesis 5 is a genealogical record that does not seem to employ symbolic language. Furthermore, if Enoch's age is considered symbolic, and the reasons for understanding that the longevity of the other patriarchs in this chapter is not symbolic, then if the ages of the other patriarchs are to be understood literally, probably the best option is also to understand Enoch's age as literal. If correct, then Enoch was the pre-Diluvian biblical patriarch who lived the least on earth, in contrast to his son Methuselah, who was the patriarch who lived the most. But as the text highlights Enoch's communion with God and the way God took him, what is clear is that a life in the immediate presence of God is an even greater privilege than having a long life on earth. The biblical information that God took Enoch to himself has generated some discussions among biblical interpreters. Some Jewish traditions, for example, do not consider that the text of the book of Genesis states that Enoch was caught up. According to these traditions, the statement that God took Enoch to himself is just a poetic way the biblical writer found to speak of the early death of a righteous man. But within Christianity, there is no doubt that the writer of the book of Genesis really states that Enoch was caught up to be bodily in the presence of God. Indeed, this is the interpretation adopted by the writer of the letter to the Hebrews, writing, By faith Enoch was taken away, so as not to see death, and he was not found, because God had taken him since before his removal, he had obtained the testimony that he had pleased God. So, those who believe in the full inspiration and inerrancy of the Bible, the best interpretation is to understand that Enoch was indeed caught up to heaven. Thus, Enoch and Noah, along with the prophet Elijah, were the two men in the Old Testament who did not experience death. And in a way, what happened to these two men of God foreshadows the future rapture of the Church of Christ. Furthermore, Enoch's catching up is also particularly important because it shows that immortality was taught from the earliest period of the Old Testament. Enoch is mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke and in the letter to the Hebrews. A note appears in the gallery of the Heroes of Faith in chapter 11. In the text, the biblical writer attributes Enoch's catching up to his remarkable faith, which led him to a testimony that pleased God. Enoch is also mentioned by Jude in his epistle, which says that Enoch prophesied about divine judgment against the wicked. Scholars discuss how Jude mentioned Enoch. This is because the New Testament writer made an almost literal situation from the apocryphal book of First Enoch. What is usually discussed is whether Jude actually quoted the apocryphal work 
or whether he took the oral tradition that was also employed in the apocryphal work. And this point leads us to make some considerations about the Book of Enoch, or rather, about the Books of Enoch, since at least three books bearing the name Enoch have been found. With Motor, they are the first Book of Enoch, or simply the Book of Enoch, the second Book of Enoch, and the Book of Enoch. The content of these books has some similarities. The most famous of these three books, the first book of Enoch, is known for its Ethiopian version. This book existed in the apostolic period and is also known by some church fathers, such as Clement of Alexandria, Irenaeus and Tertullian. But its original manuscript eventually disappeared, leaving only fragments in Greek and Ethiopian. And despite the books suggesting a supposed authorship of Enoch, the earliest date for the authorship of the fragments found goes from 200 BC, extending to the end of the first century AD. Therefore, scholars consider that the books connected to Enoch's name have no chance of actually having been written by the biblical Enoch, but according to interpreters, it may be possible that the book of Enoch contains at least some quotes from Enoch himself, which were preserved and transmitted by oral tradition. For me, personally, the book of Enoch is not necessary for my knowledge, but this is a personal opinion of mine. I respect those who may disagree. The 66 books, in my opinion, opinion are enough. But of course it does not rule out other historical extra-biblical sources such as the Dead Sea Scrolls found in 1947 at 1916 because these things brothers are great for our knowledge. And you say there what did you think of Enoch's brief story? Have you read the book of Enoch? Write your opinions on this subject in the comments. And that was the video. Beloved, if you like this video, leave your like and subscribe to the channel.